Hi to everyone and welcome to this Amatech Land webinar. Okay, right now I'd like to pass things over to today's presenter from Amatech Land, Manfred Hike. So Manfred, welcome to today's event. Go right ahead. Welcome to the Amatech Land webinar discussing the advantages in non-contact temperature measurement for continuous annealing and galvanizing lines. Please let me shortly introduce myself. My name is Manfred Heik. I'm the Global Product Manager for Infrared Temperature Measurement Products at Armatec Land. More than 20 years I'm working in the area of optical and infrared measurements and at least more than 16 years in non-contact temperature measurement applications based on parameters, line scanners, thermal images and systems. With this abstract, I would like to give a short overview of what I will talk about during this webinar. Besides the fundamentals and challenges of non-contact temperature measurement for continuous annealing and galvanizing processes, I will explain the main benefits and importance of continuous and accurate temperature measurement of coated steel strip during galvaneal and anneal reactions. Further, I will introduce the cutting edge application specific sensors for temperature measurement throughout these processes, like the new Spot GS, and will show the benefits for process control and cost savings by monitoring these temperatures accurately. In the end of this webinar, we will have a question and answer part two. Let's start with the fundamentals of non-contact temperature measurement for continuous annealing and galvanizing processes. Basically, for industrial temperature measurements, there are two main physical methods available. For example, in many furnace applications, industrial thermocouples are used to measure the furnace atmosphere temperature continuously. Typically, these thermocouples are mounted at the furnace outside wall and measure into the furnace atmosphere. All these thermocouple measurements are based on contact temperature measurement and by heat conduction. So you need to touch the material or surface of the object which temperature should be measured. As shown in the slide, with spot parameters, line scanners and thermal images, the temperatures are measured non-contact. The non-contact temperature measurement is based on detecting the emitted heat radiation infrared radiation from the object to be measured. A main part of this heat radiation is emitted in the infrared spectrum. Therefore, it is infrared non-contact temperature measurement. It's an optical temperature measurement method. Depending on the kind of material, the surface conditions and the viewing angle, the intensity of infrared heat radiation emitted from the object to be measured mainly depends from its temperature and its spectral emissivity. The emissivity is defined as a ratio of the emitted radiation of a real object to the emitted radiation of a black body at 100% emissivity at the same temperature. The image shows a metal cube, coated and uncoated, at the different sides, like black or white color or shiny or matte metal surfaces. The cube has the same temperature at all sides. By placing a hand beside the cube and taking a thermal image by a thermal imager showing different intensities of infrared radiation, you can see different temperature readings and clear reflection of the hand placed in front of the shiny metal surface and a little unclear reflections at the matte metal surface. As well, the black coated surface and the white coated surfaces seems to have a higher temperature. This is because the coated surface have a much bigger emissivity than the uncoated surfaces and the shiny metal surface has a higher reflection than the matte metal surface. The emissivity differences result into a different intensity of emitted infrared radiation, even if the cube itself has a homogeneous temperature. Keep in mind, different materials and surfaces have different emissivities, 
resulting in different temperature readings. Each material or surface has its own emissivity, which needs to be known to get the right temperature reading. Gustav Robert Kirchhoff shows that the sum of all radiation at each time is absorption plus reflection plus transmission of radiation. Further, Kirchhoff shows that the absorption of a material of all surface is the same like its emission. This results in an important basic physical law for non-contact temperature measurements. The sum of emission plus reflection plus transmission is 100% or 1. In our case, metals usually do not transmit any infrared radiation. So the transmission is zero. For these kind of materials and surfaces, 1 or 100% is each time emission plus reflection. So the emissivity is the main parameter which describes the amount of emitted radiation of an object with regards to the material, surface, and viewing angle. To make it more graphic, you can see a thermal image of some electrical connections taken with a thermal imager showing different temperatures by different image colors, called isotherms. Taking a look to the two marked temperature points, you can see different temperatures of 36 and 83 degrees Celsius so 47 degrees difference. It's quite unlikely that these temperatures are differed that much at these two measuring points are directly beside. The reason of the difference in temperature reading is that the metal connector clamp has a very shiny metal surface with a low emissivity and the wire isolation has a very high emissivity. This is the reason for the very different temperature reading. So, knowing the right object emissivity is essential to get the right temperature reading. Taking a look at the different metal surfaces of coated and uncoated steel strip, like shown in the images. You can of course see a high and very high reflection of these surfaces, even with your own eyes. These different and high reflections results into different and low emissivities, following the Kirchhoff's law explained some slides ago. And this is, of course, the main challenge in non-contact temperature measurement for annealing and galvanizing processes. Another important fact is that the intensity of heat radiation, infrared radiation, increases with its temperature at the force power detected by Stefan Boltzmann. It means if a cool steel strip is running through a hot furnace, the hotter furnace walls and parts will reflect on steel strip surface. The lower the emission of the steel surface is, the higher is the reflection influence from the background. And if the furnace temperature, refractory temperature, for example, is two times bigger then the steel strip temperature, the intensity of the hotter background radiation is 16 times bigger than the radiation emitted by the steel strip. Multiply with its emissivity. It's a huge influence. See this theoretical example. If an object in a furnace has a temperature of 100 degrees of Celsius, and the furnace refractory has 1000 degrees Celsius, and the object emissivity is 20%, a parameter of thermal imager would measure a complete radiation signal of object radiation power multiplied by object emissivity plus the refractory background radiation power multiplied by the reflection of 80% on the object surface multiplied by 10,000. So this would be a very huge influence to the temperature reading for this object. And if the steel strip surfaces and its emissivities changes during the process, what they usually do, this effect will change all over the process too. It sounds complicated, 
but that's why smart cutting edge application instruments are needed to get accurate and reliable temperature readings from the strip surface at different process steps. In order to get reliable and accurate temperature readings, I will go through this during the next slides. Okay, talking about the importance and benefits of continuous accurate measurement of coated steel strip temperature during galvanil and anneal reactions. Most of the high volume strip annealing lines are using vertical continuous annealing line furnaces called CAL. Many of these precede hot dip metal coating operations. These CAL furnaces are designed to heat and cool the steel strip in a series of controlled temperature sections to heat and clean the strip, then anneal, heat treat, and condition the steel. In order to produce the desired grain structures and properties for the end use application. In the case of a hot dip coating line, the strip is then cooled before exiting the line and entering the sink pot. So the continuous temperature measurement is essential for these processes. The furnace nitrogen hydrogen reducing atmosphere strips any residual oxygen atoms from the steel surface to prevent the possibility of future subcoating oxidization, which changes its emissivity behavior too. For all these process steps, the accurate product temperature is essential for the process and product quality and, of course, the efficiency. What are the main challenges for temperature measurement? As I discussed in the theoretical part two, in these processes, the steel strip surface has a shiny or very shiny surface and therefore a pretty low emissivity. Combined with the hotter background radiation from the furnace refractory and the changing emissivities during the process and with different alloys, the challenge is to get the right temperature reading continuously. It is essential to get the right temperature reading to control the process and ensure the right metal characteristics are reached with the end product. Further, it is necessary to get a homogeneous temperature profile across the strip to prevent any coating thickness variation or issues and to increase the production efficiency. Okay. Which application-specific sensors are available for temperature measurement throughout these processes and what are their specifications? Basically, we differentiate between a spot, a point temperature measurement device taken by a power meter, and an infrared line scanner measuring a homogeneous temperature profile across the strip. The lens spot GS is the newest part of the spot parameter family of smart application parameters, designed especially for temperature measurement of galvanized and very shiny surfaces at low and changing emissivities. The lens scan line scanner creates a temperature profile across the strip up to 150 times a second. Tracking the movement of the strip the scanner system creates a complete thermal image of the processed strip very fast and accurate. These scanners are mainly used in vertical continuous annealing lines at different stages like the LSB HD21 for measuring into wedges between a roll and the strip. I will go through this in detail later. At the top of the snoot, after the galvanil section and the LSB HD20 at the top roll. In horizontal lines, where usually no wedges are available, the Spot GS is able to present accurate and reliable temperature readings of the steel strip surface. I will go through this in detail too. As each line is different, we recommend to have a side survey with one of our experienced engineers on site at the line to determine 
what are the best options to integrate such temperature measurement services. Probably some of you in the audience already have such kind of parameter measurements integrated in their cull lines where no wedges are available. The image shows a System 4 instrument mounted on the top of a horizontal line and measuring down to the strip surface. Usually these instruments are equipped with water-cooled sighting tubes to prevent most of the hot reflections from the furnace background to the strip surface. The other possibility is to use an existing thermocouple mounting in the near of the parameter which gives a background temperature reading to the parameter to correct the effect of background radiation. With the new smart Spot GS application parameter, you can now use only the parameter without a water-cooled sighting tube. And even if the strip surface MSCVD changes, the smart application parameter adjusts the right parameters to get a most accurate temperature measurement within a few milliseconds. If there is a much higher background temperature, it is also possible to use the direct spot parameter input to get the thermocouple background temperature reading and to correct the background influence of the continuous temperature readings too. What is new and different with the smart application parameter SpotGS? The SpotGS is a smart multi-wavelength galvanite strip application parameter which is perfect for the temperature measurement on uncertain emissivity values of galvanized strip during the process. Even if the strip surface has a very low emissivity, a very shiny metal surface, the spot GS gives accurate temperature readings. It includes two smart algorithms, which are calculated with each temperature reading within 10 milliseconds. The traditional GST algorithm is dedicated to accurate measurements of fully galvanized or galvanized surfaces. And the GS plus algorithm extends the performance of the GST algorithm back to the zinc pot, tracking emissivity all the way from the liquid state. As described before, if reflections at higher temperatures are a problem, the spot GS can use background reflection, which can either be a preset temperature or can be taken from a thermocouple input, can be sent to SpotGS via Modbus or web server to adjust the measurement accordingly. What are the main smart specifications of the SpotGS and the LensPot parameter series? Apart from a very robust and precise telescope optics, all the digital processing is done within the parameter by the two integrated digital signal processors at a very high speed. The GS has a response time of 10 milliseconds, so you will get 100 readings per second. With the integrated GST and GS plus modes, in most processes, the parameter just needs to be easily installed and delivers the right temperatures readings at once. Real plug and play, it works fine for about 90% of all applications. Otherwise, the offset temperature input enables to adjust the readings to the process. The correct parameters for the ratio of the multi-wavelengths parameter are calculated with each value smart and automatically. To get reliable, accurate temperature readings, from the process with changing emissivities and alloys. The main specifications of the Spot GS are the temperature range is 200 to 1000 degrees Celsius. The response time is 10 milliseconds, so the speed is with 100 Hertz. The field of view is 60 to 1. The integrated algorithms are the GST and the GS plus mode can be selected in the instrument. The accuracy has two degrees at 300 degrees and above with a resolution of 0 0.1 degree. This instrument can work without cooling at an ambient temperature of 0 to 70 degrees. 
The communications interface is a Modbus TCP 24 volts digital. All the spot parameters have an integrated web server, which can be easily accessed by a usual web browser. Further, a free spot viewer software is available for download on our web page. In vertical cal lines, wedges between the strip and several roads are present. As Nippon Kokan describes in 1984, due to multiple reflections in the wedges, the wedge gets to some kind of a cavity and has an emissivity of nearly 1 or 100%. So what makes the temperature reading on very shiny metal surfaces a challenge is a worthful physical behavior by measuring into batches. This is very stable and very high emissivity. Background radiation effects or surface changes will not affect the temperature reading in the wedges. Spot parameters as well as infrared line scanners can be used to get the right temperature reading and the temperature profile by using the scanners. The instrument should be installed at the wedge of the roll when the strip already touches the surface of the roll minimum 25% as per the lower left image. On the left hand side, you can see an image of a thermal imager taken by measuring down into such a cull line. It shows the different effects and temperatures created by different reflections and emissivities. The upper right illustration shows possible measurement positions for land line scanners, such as at the rapid cooling area to measure the amount of cooling, at the overaging area and the hot bridge to get strict temperature profile and to control the process. The measurement results at the lower side of the page shows a result of the temperature profile measurement taken with such scanners correlated to the moving speed of the strip to get a complete and very homogeneous temperature image, thermal image of the strip. These are very worthful data showing the process and product quality. The Armatec Land product range for non-contact temperature measurements like spot parameter series, the land line scanners, and the thermal images are ready for Industry 4.0. They provide industry standard interfaces such as Modbus TCP and Power over Ethernet, which can be quickly and easily integrated into new or existing product lines. Thus, much more data can be exchanged continuously between the measuring system and the process than just the pure measuring signal. And finally, what are the benefits and cost savings by using this kind of smart temperature measurements? With international requirements for more fuel efficient vehicles growing each year and electrical mobility, the demand for lightweight high strength steels is expanding produced in these processes. Precise and controlled heat treating cycles enable to produce such sophisticated grain structures of advanced high strength steels. Smart and cutting edge temperature measurement and control systems are necessary to keep pace with these production and heat treating methods. The automotive and aerospace industry continuously increases the demand for high quality and light white steel. Therefore, the demand for process control will increase too. With high accurate and reliable temperature measurement, you can control the production process and decrease downtime and repair costs, increase the product quality, increase process efficiency and save costs, and improve the positioning in the global market. This slide shows the references I used to prepare this webinar. I've got already the following five questions I would like to answer during this webinar. 
Okay, Manfred, thanks so much for that great presentation. Here's your first question. How do I set up the pyrometer for a horizontal cow line? Usually, the places for the pyrometers are between the different temperature zones. Between the heating zones, no flames are present to prevent the high temperatures in the background, as you can see in the drawing. Okay, Manfred, thanks for that answer. Here's another question that came in. What type of maintenance does the line scanners in a vertical line need, as they are not easy to access? The line scanners are mechanically installed with adjustable sealed-to-process mounting accessories. That means that the aligning of the line scanners to the wedge between the roll and the strip is done once during installation and commissioning. For maintenance or calibration check, you can easily unmount the scanner from the adjustable mounting device and remount it after maintenance. In both cases, the basic alignment of the scanner keeps unchanged and no new adjustment needs to be done. It's pretty easy and a big benefit in the process. And thank you once again, Manfred. Your next questioner asks, when do I need a cooling tube and when not? As mentioned before, it is depending from the background or the hotter background. If such reflections are a problem, you can take a thermocouple reading as a background temperature, which can either be a preset temperature or can be taken from a thermocouple continuously sent to the spot GS parameter for online correction. We also recommend a site survey by one of our engineers in preparation for such a measurement if a cooling tube is needed or if not. Okay, thank you once again, Manfred. Here's your next question. When do you use a line scanner and a pyrometer? For measuring into wedges between the rolls and the strip, you can use both, a spot pyrometer or a line scanner. It's a question if you want to get the whole temperature profile of the strip or just a measuring spot in the middle of the strip. In horizontal lines, usually pyrometers are used, mainly the spot GS. Both are used to have a closed loop control for the whole process. Okay, Manfred, thank you very much. Another interesting question was, would it be possible to detect the edges of the strip and, if possible, the position of the strip across the rolls? Yes. This is another main feature with our land line scanner system, which already includes this kind of position and width measurement. You can not only control the width of the strip, but also if it turns to shift to a furnace wall or out of range and needs to be realigned to the center of the rolls. The accuracy to detect the edges is about 1.5 samples of all the 1,000 samples with each scanning line, so at a very high accuracy. Please let me add, as the furnace wall surrounding the strip at the same or even a higher temperature than the strip itself, the thermal contrast at the edges of the strip is very poor. So how handling this? It's easy by installing a water-cooled tube underneath the strip where the strip width and position should be measured. There will be a very sharp contrast between the strip and the background, enabling the exact strip width measurement. These are the first five questions and answers. Hopefully, it was helpful to understand the advantages in non-contact temperature measurement for continuous annealing in galvanizing lines. Okay, Manfred, and with that, we're going to wrap things up right there. Manfred Hike, thanks so much for taking the time to be here with all of us today. Thank you very much for your attention. And we'd certainly like to say a special thank you to all of our audience members for being part of this webinar event. Take care and have yourselves a great day.